from around the globe. It's theCUBE with digital coverage of AWS reInvent Executive Summit 2020. Sponsored by Accenture and AWS. Welcome everyone to theCUBE Virtual's coverage of the Accenture Executive Summit, part of AWS reInvent 2020. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. We are talking today about reinventing the energy data platform. We have two guests joining us. First, we have Johan Krebers. He is the GM Digital Emerging Technologies and VP of IT Innovation at Shell. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Johan. You're welcome. And next we have Liz Dennett. She is the lead solution architect for OSDU on AWS. Thank you so much, Liz. Happy to be here. So I want to start our conversation by talking about OSDU. Like so many great innovations, it, it started with a problem. Johan, what was the problem you were trying to solve at Shell? Yeah, we have to go back a couple of years. We started summer 2017. We had, we, we had a meeting with the, the guys from exploration in Shell. And the main problem they had, of course, they got lots and lots of data, but are unable to find the right data they need to work from. Because the data was scattered and is scattered, but was scattered, but it's all over the place. And so the real, the real problem we tried to solve is how that an, a person working in exploration could find their proper data, not, not just the data, but also the data they really needed. That's what we did, probably talked about in summer 2017. And we said, okay, the, the only way we see this moving forward is to start pulling that data into a single data platform. And that, that was at the time that we called it SDU, the subservice data universe. In that was what the shell name was. So in in January 20, 2018, we started a project with Amazon to start creating and configuring the building that SDU environment, that subservice data universe. So that single data platform to put all your exploration and wells data into that single environment. That was intent. And then we said um, already in March of that same year, we said, well, from a shell point of view, it would be far better off if we could make this an industry solution and not just a shell solution because shell will be, shell will be if we can make this an industry solution where people start developing applications for it, it also is far better than for shell to say we have a shell special solution because we don't make money out of how we store the data we can make money out of we have access to the data how we can exploit the data so storing the data we should do as efficiently as we possibly can so in march we reached out about eight or nine other large uh, oil and gas operators, like the Econors, like the Totals, like the Chevrons of this world, and say, hey, we in Shell are doing this, do you want to join this effort? And to our surprise, they all said yes. And, and then in September 2018, we had our kickoff meeting with the open group, where we said, we, we said, okay, if you want to work together with lots of other companies, we also need to look at, okay, how, how we organize that. Because if you start working with lots of large companies, you need to have some legal framework around some framework around it. So that's why we went to the open group and said, okay, let's let's form the OSDU forum, as we called it at the time. So in September uh, 2018, we had in a Galleria in Houston with the kickoff meeting for the OSDU forum with about 10 members at the time. So that's just over two years ago, we started this exercise formally it called OSDU, uh, it kicked it off. Uh, in, so that's really the, where we coming from and how we got there also. The origin story. Um, yes. what, so what, digging a little deeper there, what were some of the things you were trying to achieve with the OSDU? Well, a couple of things we tried to achieve with the OSDU. Um, first is really separating data from applications. Because what is the, what is the biggest problem we have in the subsurface space? That the data and applications are all interlinked, they're all tied together. And if, if you have then an, a new company coming along and say, I have this new application and needs access to the data, then it's not possible because the data is often interlinked with the application. So the first thing we did is really breaking the link between the application and the data out there. So that was the first thing we did. Secondly, put all the data to a single data platform, take the silos out because what was happening in the subservice space and in the, that you had all the data in what we call silos in small, little islands out there. So what we try to do is first break that link, two, create, create the, put the data in a single data platform, and the third part, put a standard layer on top of that, the standard API layer on top of that, create a platform, so we could create an ecosystem out of companies to start developing software applications on top of that data platform. Because you might have a data platform, 
but you're only successful if you have a rich ecosystem of people start developing applications on top of that. And then you can exploit the data like small companies, large companies, universities, you name it, but you have to create an ecosystem out there. So the three things was, was first, break the link between application and data, just break it and put data at the center and also make sure that data, this data structure would not be managed by one company. It would only be it would be managed the data structures by the OD forum. Secondly, then uh, put the data to a single data platform. Thirdly, then have an API layer on top, and then create create an ecosystem. Really uh, go for people say please start developing applications because now they had access to the data because the data is no longer linked to somebody's application. It was all freely available for the API layer. That was that was all September uh, 2018 more or less. Liz, I want to bring you in here a little bit. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about some of the imperatives from the AWS standpoint in terms of what you were trying to achieve with this? Yeah, absolutely. And, and this whole thing, as Johan said, started with a challenge that was really brought out at Shell. The challenge is that geoscientists spend up to 70% of their time looking for data. I'm a geologist. I've spent more than 70% of my trying, time trying to find data in these silos. And from there, instead of just figuring out how we could address that one problem, we work together to really understand the root cause of these challenges. And working backwards from that use case, OSDU and OSD1 AWS has really enabled customers to create solutions that span not just this in particular problem, but can really scale to be inclusive of the entire energy value chain and deliver value from these use cases to the energy industry and beyond. Thank you. Uh, Johan, so talk a little bit about Accenture's cloud first approach and how it has uh, helped Shell work faster and better with speed. Well, of course, uh, uh, Accenture cloud first approach really works together with, with an Amazon environment, AWS environment. So we really look at, 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 at Accenture and Amazon together, helping Shell in this space. Now, the combination of the two is what we're really looking at, uh, where Accenture of course can bring business knowledge to, the, to that environment operate support knowledge to, to an environment. And of course, Amazon will bring to, to, to this environment, the, the underpinning uh, services, et cetera. So uh, we really expect uh, of that combination, uh, a, a lot of goods when we start rolling out in production, the OGR3 environment, because we, our aim is when, when the release three comes to the market uh, in, the, in Q1 next year of OGU, and we really start rolling that out in production inside Shell, but it's the first OU release, which is really for prime time production across uh, an enterprise. Where we, we, have, we, we released R1 just before Christmas last year, release two in May of this year, but release three is the first release we're going to use for full scale production and deployment inside Shell and also other operators around the world. And there is what Amazon, sorry, there what um, Accenture can play a role in the ongoing, in the in deployment, building up, but also the support environment. So one of the other things that, that we talk a lot about here on theCUBE is sustainability. And this is a big imperative at so many organizations around the world, in particular energy companies. How does this move to OSDU uh, help organizations become, how is this a greener solution for companies? Well, first we make, it's a great solution because you start making a much more efficient use of your resources, which is, uh, which, which, and, 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 which is already an important one. The second thing we're doing is also, we started with OSDU in, um, in uh, very much in the oil and gas space, with, in the expert development space, but we've grown uh, OSDU, in our strategy, we've grown OSDU now also to the alternative energy source. So OSDU will also start supporting next year, things like solar farms, wind farms, uh, the, the geothermal environment, hydrogen. So it becomes an, an, an open energy data platform, not just for the, oil, for the oil, and oil and gas industry, but for any type of industry, any type of energy industry. So our focus is to create, bring that data of all those various energy data sources to get into a single data platform. So you can use AI and other technology on top of that to exploit the data to bring together into a single data platform. Liz, I want to ask you about security because security yeah. is, is, is such a big concern when it comes to data. How secure is the data on OSDU? Um, actually, can I talk, can I uh, do a follow-up on the sustainability talking point? Oh, real oh absolutely, by all means. I mean, I, I want to interject though. Security is absolutely our top priority. I don't mean to, to move away from that, but 
with sustainability, in addition to the benefits of the OSU data platform, when a company moves from on-prem to the cloud, they're also able to leverage the benefits of scale. Now, AWS is committed to running our business in the most environmentally friendly way possible. And our scale allows us to achieve higher resource utilization and energy efficiency than a typical on-prem data center. Now, a recent study by 451 Research found that AWS's infrastructure is 3.6 times more energy efficient than the median of surveyed enterprise data centers. Two thirds of that advantage is due to higher um, server utilization and a more energy efficient server population. But when you factor in the carbon intensity of consumed electricity and renewable energy purchases, 451 found that AWS performs the same task with an 88% lower carbon footprint. Now that's just another way that AWS and OSDU are working to support our customers as they seek to better understand their workflows and make their legacy businesses less carbon intensive. That's, that's incredible. Those are, those statistics are incredible. Do you want to talk a little bit now about security? <laughs> Absolutely. And security will always be AWS's top priority. In fact, AWS has been architected to be the most flexible and secure cloud computing environment available today. Our core infrastructure is built to satisfy the, re the security requirements for the military, global banks, and other high sensitivity organizations. And in fact, AWS uses the same secure hardware and software to build and operate each of our regions so that customers benefit from the only commercial cloud that's had hits service offerings and associated supply chain vetted and deemed secure enough for top secret workloads. That's backed by a deep set of cloud security tools with more than 200 security compliance and governmental service and key features, as well as an ecosystem of partners like Accenture that can really help our customers to make sure that their environments for their data meet and or exceed their security requirements. Johan, I want you to talk a little bit about how OSDU can be used today. Does it only handle subsurface data? Uh, today it handles subsurface wells data. We're going to add to that production around the middle of next year. That means that the whole of the upstream business, so you got, if you look at the upstream, typical upstream business goes from exploration all the way to production. You bring it together into a single data platform. So production will be added around Q3 of next year. And then in principle, we have a typical, the elder data in single environment. And we're going to extend it then to other data sources or energy sources like solar farms, wind farms, uh, hydrogen, hydro, uh, et cetera. So we're going to add a whole, a whole, a whole list of other day energy sources to that and bring all the data together into a single data platform. So we move from an oil and gas data platform to an energy data platform. That's really what our objective is. And because the whole industry, if you look at, if you look at our companies, all moving in that same direction, of course, you, of course, are very strong in oil and gas, but also increasingly go into other, other energy sources like like solar, like wind, like like hydrogen, etc. So we we move exactly with the same method that uh, that 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 the whole OSU can really support that whole energy spectrum of energy sources, of course. And and Liz and Johan, I want you to close us out here by just giving us a look into your crystal balls and talking about the five and ten year plan for OSDU. We'll start with you, Liz. What do you, what do you see as the future holding for this platform? Um, honestly, the incredibly cool thing about working at AWS is you never know where the innovation and the journey is going to take you. I personally am looking forward to work with our customers wherever their OSDU journeys take them, whether it's enabling um, new energy solutions or continuing to expand to support use cases throughout the energy value chain and beyond, but really looking forward to continuing to partner as we innovate to slay tomorrow's challenges. Johan? Yeah, first, uh, nobody can look that far ahead anymore nowadays, especially 10 years, I mean, that would, pff, who knows what happens in 10 years. But if you look what our whole objective is, that really in the next five years, OSU really become the key backbone for energy companies, for store your data, do artificial intelligence, and optimize the whole supply, the energy supply chain uh, in this world out there. Johan Krebers, Liz Dennett, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE Virtual. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight. Stay tuned for more of our coverage of the Accenture Executive Summit.